know. Greetings, my friend. Dr. Jackson here of Meat Ministry coming to you with part two of our presentation entitled Diet and the Sanctuary. So as we commence this time, I'd like to invite the divine teacher, the Holy Spirit. So will you not pray with me as I bow on my knees? So let us pray. O oh, gracious, eternal, holy, righteous Father, once again we come into thy divine presence asking in the name of Jesus for the Holy Spirit, the divine instructor, to guide us in the study of your word to come to a greater understanding and clarity of this important subject. I pray now for the Holy Spirit to be our teacher, the angels be with us, keep it back, seen and unseen distraction that would interfere with us hearing you speak clearly to our hearts and showing us your perfect will and providing the power to walk therein. Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come now and download to us your service, your divine will for our lives that we might be prepared to receive the seal of the living God and help hasten your coming. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Diet in the sanctuary. So before we come to our concluding part, I'd like to remind you again, our upcoming 33rd Gospel Medical Missionary Camp Meeting held September the 2nd through the 5th, September the 2nd through the 5th on Camp on Meat Ministry Campus, September the 2nd through the 5th. The theme is God's Healing Word, Restoring the Mind. We want to come to get practical instruction, empowerment, to have the mental disposition, the mental disposition to receive the seal of the living God. The greatest battle to be fought is the battle for the mind who occupy your mind, uh, my mind, control our destiny. And we like to be what the scripture says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, I press towards the mark, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The high calling is God-likeness. Godliness. That's the high calling. Gospel Medical Missionary Camp Meeting. Meet Ministry. September the 2nd through the 5th. You can contact us. Uh, you can register. Uh, only thing that is, is costs some money is your lunch meal. If you want to have your lunch, you can bring your own lunch. You, you can call to register for your lunch meal, and especially for your Sabbath meal. Bring your tents, your campus. Uh, we already, uh, all, all of our available houses has already been uh, asked, for, I mean, requested. So there are motels 10 to 15 minutes away. Contact us at 731-986-3518. That's 731-986-3518, Monday through Thursday, between the hours of 9 a.m., and 1 p.m. Or you can go to our website at Meet Ministry, M-E-E-T, M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y dot O-R-G. You'll see the information. I look forward to seeing you there with other speakers focusing on the practical application of the principle of God to restore these minds, that it would be like Jesus, according to Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you. It was in Christ Jesus. The mental disposition of God's sealed people. Let's open my Bible to our foundational text as we did in part one. We're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We want to read verses 16 and 17. The Bible says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that spirit of God dwelleth in you and me. Verse 17, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. The temple of God, this body. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Notice what the Bible says. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of God. 
and ye are not your own. We're not our own. We're bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus. And verse 20 says, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Diet in the day of atonement. So we're going to the greatest medical book ever been written according to Psalms 100 verse 3. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. This scripture tells us that our bodies have been purchased. Our bodies have been created and redeemed and been restored according to this verse. So God owns us. He has given us an owner's manual. How to operate the product? The word of God. The living word of God. Abundant help. We're fine. In John 10.10, 10, the Bible says, The thief come to rob, steal, and kill. Jesus come, I come to give you life, and life more abundantly. The thief want to come to do one thing. He come to steal your life through stealing your health. That's very important. Christ come to give us life and life more, more abundantly. For our bodies, as been declared, are the temple of God. According to 1 Corinthians, as we read, chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Now, the way is in the sanctuary. All of our questions can be answered by understanding the principles in the sanctuary. And especially this one, when it comes down to Christ eating flesh food. Is it okay then for us to eat flesh food? The Bible says here, Psalm 77, 13, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great of a God as our God? Then in the book of Psalm 68, 24, They have seen thy goings, O God, even the goings of my God, my King, in the sanctuary. In the sanctuary, God's ways are unveil to us. Therefore, why is taking care of my body so important? Let the scripture tell us according to 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body, that's physical, mental, and spiritual, be preserved. That's what God wants us to do. Preserve these bodies blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ that we might present ourselves a living sacrifice according to Romans 12, 1 and 2. A living sacrifice. Jesus Christ, our mediator in the holies of holies of the sanctuary. According to Hebrews 8, 12, Hebrews 7, 25, Hebrews 4, verses 14 through 16. Daniel 8, 14, the cleansing of the sanctuary. And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. We are in the day of the cleansing of the sanctuary. The heavenly sanctuary is being polluted as a result of our sins. Keep going into the sanctuary. And Christ is there to cleanse it with his own blood. And the only way the sanctuary can be cleansed when we, by God's grace working in us, stop sinning. Stop sending our sins up. When we are purged according to John 15, purged from all our iniquitous ways and filled with his precious fruit. That's what has to happen, folks, because Daniel 8, 14 talks about the day of atonement. Atonement means at one minute with God, and what separates us from God is that our sin, our iniquity separates us from God. God only hates one thing, that sin. He loves the sinner. I thank God for that. But he know how to separate my sin from me. Because if I hold on to that sin, because he want, he's going to destroy sin. God is not in the business of destroying people. He only destroys sin and the originator of it, and that's the devil. It's just like any disease. If you don't get that disease out of your body, that virus out of your body, it's going to kill you. Sin. See, the greatest pandemic that we're facing today is not the COVID-19. The pandemic is sin, and God has a remedy for sin, the blood of Jesus. 
to come to him with true repentance, confessing our sins to him and seeking forgiveness and cleansing. And he said in 1 John 1, 9, he will forgive because he's faithful and will cleanse. Very important. At one minute with God, Leviticus 16, 30. For in that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. So the priest doing the antitypical day of atonement, the typical day rather, he stood in the gap between the living and the dead. And during the antitypical day, that's what Christ is doing. He's mediating now in the holies of holies. He's standing between the living and the dead. We are the dead. Christ, God is the living. Making the final atonement. Mediating with his own blood. That's why we admonish in the word of God that we have a high priest who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities and come boldly to the throne of grace in time of need. And that need is, is to ask God or give God the consent to take our heart. Because we can't give it. It's belong to him. Very important. We're living that time. And the antitypical day of atonement. We've been in that day since 1844. 176 years. We are in the fourth generation of the Advent movement. We are in the toenails of that. We find in Daniel 14 until 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. We know a day for a year principle, 2,300 years, brings up to 1844 as we study that in another time. Leviticus 23, 30, 23 to 30, four things were required as we saw through our last presentation. Number one, they had to convene themselves because the day of atonement was a holy convocation. Holy convocation is a time for worship, time for coming together, praying together, hearing the word of God, admonishing one another, Building up one another in the most holy faith. Holy convocation. Like Sabbath worship, camp meetings. But the day of atonement was a time for the people to gather together. Afflict their souls. Made offering by fire. And no work in that same day. Those are studying study itself. So we're living in the day of atonement. Therefore, that's holy convocation. And we find ourselves, we're on earth. But by faith, we are in the holies of holies. That's why we come together during certain seasons. That's why we have camp meetings. That's why I gave you the acknowledgement of the camp meeting here at Meet Ministry. That camp meeting is happening around the country. Some are really having a camp meeting. We will be having a camp meeting here. Open tent, tent in the fresh air. Holy convocation coming to Praise God, give him glory, to receive instruction that is applicable for us in these last days of earth history. Holy convocation, afflict thy souls. Now, one of the duties of the congregation was to afflict their souls. According to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27, 29. Psalms 51, verse 1 to 9. David said, I acknowledge my sin, I confess my sin. That's what we should be doing, acknowledging our wretchedness. You know, there's a message called the Laodicea message in the book of Revelation chapter 3. See, the problem with Laodicea is not they look warm, that they do not know that they have a problem, that they are wretched, poor, and miserable. We must realize as God convicts us of our sin, come to his throne of grace in the name of Jesus, confessing our sins, that we might receive forgiveness and cleansing. And Isaiah 58, 1 through 14, the true fast. True fast, according to Isaiah 58, is fasting from our own ways and allowing God to work through us to serve, to minister to others who are in certain predicament that they need a stretched out hand, humbling ourselves. And... 1 Corinthians 3, 16, recognizing that our bodies are the temple of God and therefore health reform. To afflict our soul is to deny self. One of the fruit of the spirit is temperance, self-control, moderation, and abstinence. To deny ourselves of those things that would defile this body, whether it's food, drink, clothing, whatever it is, 
to deny ourselves, to flick, come to God, praying, wrestling with God. So, Lord, take this item from me. Because I read in your word of God, I read in your word that this item is destructive to my body. So we got to plead with God. We need his grace. John 15, 5 says, without me, you can do nothing. So one of the duties of the congregation is to afflict their soul, acknowledging sin, fasting, serving unselfishly, and allowing God to empower us to practice true health reform. As we move on, we see 1 John 1, 9, God said, if you confess your sin, I am faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you. So we found the diet in the sanctuary. Three diets, first of all. Diet before the fall. Diet after the fall. Diet after the flood. We saw that in our last first presentation. Then we realized the diet in the sanctuary. The original diet. We're going to see this. Before the fall, fruit, nuts, and grains. The restoration diet, after the fall, fruit, nuts, grains, and vegetables. Vegetable was not a part of the original diet. It was added after that. Then the emergency diet, the flood diet, flesh food, was not given to the flood time. So as we look at the sanctuary, we see three areas, the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place, the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. We see here flesh food was eaten only in the outer court. We see fruit, nuts, grains, and vegetables were represented in the holy place. We see fruits, nuts, and grains were represented in the most holy place. Flesh food, this is where the priests received the offering from the confessed sinner. Many times he catch the blood of the animal that the sinner confessed over and cut the throat. You took the blood in. Sometimes the priest would eat part of the flesh food, bearing the sins in his own body. That was in outer court. As we move into the holy place, we see the table of showbread, grains, we see the candlestick shaped like, not like lilies, the vegetables, almonds. We see pomegranate on the hem of the priest's garment. We see those symbols in the most holy place, the pot of manna, the bells of pomegranate. We see the, the nuts there. All of those are representative. Flesh food, animal sacrifice, Exodus chapter 29, 32. Leviticus 8, 31, the animal sacrifice was done in the outer court. We find here God gave restriction with eating flesh food. He said, you should not eat fat nor blood. Leviticus 3, 17, eat fat nor blood. Then we must eat that animal when we kill it within three days because three days mean that's when putrefaction, bacteria, sets in. Eat it within three days. So we have to kill our own animals, drain the blood, trim it off with fat, and eat it within three days. I think you might get accustomed to it, but you might become weary in doing that. Because the blood contains the very hormones, the humors, and all that the animal has. The blood is what creates the addiction. It keeps you coming back to it. I know what I'm talking about. I, I was a blood-eating person myself, eat no blood, eat no fat, eat it within three days. These are God's plan, not man's. If you have a fight, you fight with the God that created you, huh? Reason for the flesh diet, the emergency diet, the emergency diet. Genesis chapter 6, verses 17 to 22, Genesis chapter 7, 1 through 16. Shorten the life of man. You can look at the longevity chart from Adam in creation. is to live forever. You get down to Noah, 9 and 17 years after the flood, went down to 300. Then beyond the flood to our time, the average lifespan is 70. 
I was in the Philippines about a year or so ago, and I met, I believe, the longest living woman. At that time, she was 129, she was about 122. She was the oldest living person. She was a seven-day Adventist Christian lady, playing the harmonica, 120 years. But the average lifespan is 70 years of age, 70. We were designed. Were we designed to eat flesh meat? No. We don't have teeth like animals. These here come from a carnivorous animal, sharp for tearing, tearing. These teeth here are for grinding. Our teeth are not designed to tear flesh. Look at our hands. We don't have no claws. Animals got claws for tearing. Our digestive system from the mouth all the way down to the colon is something like almost 36 feet. And the colon itself, two feet of transverse, two feet of ascending, two feet of descending with ripples, pockets peristalsis, churning. An animal, flesh-eating animal uh, uh, digestive system, colon, is short and smooth. Quick transit time. Our transit time, it takes something like 24 hours from the time we digest in our mouth to our stomach down to our, uh, into our intestines, down to our colon, should be 24 hours. It's a slow process. Therefore, we do not produce enough hydrochloric acid to break down the meat substance in our stomach. It would be retained longer, putrefied, set up bacteria, autoimmune problems. Animal system is not like that, it was not designed. We were not created to eat flesh food. Therefore, as we come to our last part, Christ and flesh food, Christ's ministry here on earth. Now notice what it says. Christ's ministry here on earth was a fulfillment of all the types of the outer court administration of the earthly sanctuary. Did you get that? Christ's ministry here on earth, when he was on earth, was a fulfillment of all the types of the outer court administration of the earthly sanctuary, the sacrifice, etc. You find that? Hebrews chapter 9, verse 1, verses 1 through 28. Exodus 29, 32. Leviticus 8, 31. Christ's ministry here on earth was a fulfillment of all the types of the outer court administration of the earthly Sanctuary, the holy place, diet. You see showbread, vegetables. You see Exodus, nuts, candlestick, almonds. Exodus 25, fruit, pure olive oil, and pomegranate on the priest's garment. This is the holy place diet, all symbolized in those three items. We find Acts 27, 20. This is the holy place diet that has no flesh food in it. That's the holy place diet. So we find as we go to the most holy place, the most holy place diet, what does it consist of? Very important to understand that. The most holy place diet, as we saw, had fruit, nuts, grains, fruit, pomegranate on a high priest's garment the bells and pomegranates. We find grains, pot of manna, in the ark. Very important to understand that. We also see that you got fruit, grains, what else that was there in that place? So you have fruit, grains, and there's nuts. There was no flesh food. Aaron's rod that budded almonds. Number 17, verse 1 through 9. Hebrews 9, 3, 4. Fruit, grains, nuts. That's the most holy place diet. So we see from the outer court, flesh food, we see in the holy place, fruit, grains, nuts, and vegetables. We see vegetables is dropped off till we get into that holy place diet. We find in those three compartments, the outer court represent justification. The holy place represent sanctification. The most holy place represent glorification. 
Three steps, process. Very important to understand that. Fruit, the restoration diet, the holy place, that's the restoration diet. We find God gave us fruit, grains, nuts, vegetables to prepare. That's, that's the diet that God has us on today. Those who enter to relationship with God, make a covenant with God through sacrifice, they will be dropping off all of those items that defile the body that is not supported by the word of God. Fruit, grains, nuts, and vegetables. The restoration diet in the holy place. Now some people become so smart, or smarter than God, they put themselves on the most holy place diet, restrict, there ain't no vegetables, then they got a lot of other additives to it. Don't add to God's word. Follow his steps, he will empower you. It's very clear. Don't try to be unique or different, just follow God's word. We find them. The original diet, the most holy place diet. God, listen to what it says in Council of Diets and Food, page 81. God is leading his people back to the original diet. Now, so when we mention that Christ was fulfilling, let me go back, Christ was fulfilling all the ministration of the out of court diet. Now, I'm just, I'm going to click this off because we're almost finished. There is a sanctuary in heaven. We have, a earth, we have a heavenly sanctuary. The earthly sanctuary has been done away with. Christ is, we saw scripture, Christ is our high priest mediating in the holies of holies of the heavenly sanctuary between the living and the dead, making the final atonement for our sin, pleading with his own blood in the ho most holy place. You read that in the book of Daniel? We read that in the book of Revelation? And we find them. Now, there is a first apartment and there is a second apartment, but there is no outer court in heaven. So in, we find that when Christ ascended in heaven from this earth. He did not go directly into the most holy place. He went into the holy place until 1844 of the Day of Atonement. Then he moved from the holy place to the most holy place, making the final atonement for our sin. That's why we were to follow him as he went step by step. And so we find now the outer court is not in heaven. The earth, the earth represents the outer court. When Christ came on the scene, when he walked this earth, he is walking the outer court. Therefore, when the disciple got off that little boat, Christ had some boiled fish for him. Fish. He ate flesh food. He was in outer court, fulfilling the ministration of the outer court until he moved into the holy place. Thus, now in the most holy place. Do you get this? It's a transition. He was fulfilling the type. The priest, the ancient priest, the earthly priest, ate flesh food in the outer court. They ate it. Christ was fulfilling that. The earth represented the outer court. That's why it was in harmony with God's will when Christ ate flesh food. But now... We are living in the day of an antitypical day of atonement. Restoration time. Restoration time. From a book called Council of Dyes and Food, page 201, I saw that you had mistaken notion about afflicting your bodies, depriving yourself of nourishing food. It says, these things lead some of the church to think that God is surely with you, or you will not deny self and sacrifice thus. But I saw that none of these things will make you more holy. The heathen do all this, but receive no reward for it. A broken, contrite spirit before God is in his sight of great price. I saw that your views concerning these things are erroneous and that you are looking at the church and watching them, noticing little things when your attention should be turned to your own soul interest. God has not laid the burden of his flock upon you, 
That means we need to understand truly for ourselves steps we should be making in preparation for the time of trouble. Council dies for 201. You think that the church is upon the ground because they cannot see things as you do and because they do not follow the same rigid course because there was people during that time had rigid dietary habits during that time. Strict diet. Very strict. Eliminate everything, most everything. Like today, people are still strict today. They won't eat no cooked food. Maybe a raw diet. A lot of extremes. Then it goes on and says here, I saw that you are deceived in regard to your own duty and duty of others. Some have gone to extremes in regard to the diet. They have taken a rigid course and live so very plain that their health has suffered, disease has strengthened in their system, and the temple of God has been weakened. So we can get to extreme where we're not following God, that we just narrow ourselves down. We start eliminating everything out of the diet. Now, return to the original host of diet. Is it not time that all should aim to dispense with flesh food? How can those who are seeking to become pure, refined, and holy, that they may have the companionship of heavenly angels, continue to use as food anything that has so harmful an effect on soul and body? How can they take the life of God's creatures that they might consume the flesh as a luxury? Let them rather return to the wholesome and delicious food given to man in the beginning, a plant-based diet that has nourishing effect upon the brain and the mind. Wise counsel. The course of those awaiting Christ's coming. I'm waiting for Christ's coming. I hope you are too. Notice what it says. Among those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, meat eating, that's flesh food, will eventually be done away. Flesh will cease to form a part of their diet. When is that time? The time is now. <clears throat> this is written over 100 years ago. We shall ever keep this end in view and endeavor to work steadily toward it. <clears throat> I cannot think that in the practice of flesh eating, we are in harmony with the light which God has been pleased to give us. We're not in harmony with it. We must realize the time that we are living in. The day of amphitypical day of atonement. Very important to understand this. Flesh food will be discarded. Again and again, <clears throat> I have been shown that God is bringing his people back to his original design. That is, not to subsist on flesh of dead animals. He will have us teach people a better way, a better way. If meat is discarded, if the taste is not educated in that direction, if a liking for fruits and grains is encouraged, it will soon be as God in the beginning designed it should be. No meat will be used by his people. No meat. Child guidance, page 383, paragraph 3. Again and again, I have been shown that God is leading his people back, step by step, to the original diet. That man should subsist on the natural products of the earth. Among those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, meat eating will eventually be done away. Flesh will cease to form a part of their diet. We should ever keep this in the interview. Very important. It goes on. We must educate our taste, bring our diet to God's plan. Then we may exert an influence upon others in this matter, which would be pleasing to God. Christian temperance and Bible hygiene, 119. We would exert a saving influence. Moral principles strictly carried out 
becomes the only safeguard of the soul. Notice what it says. Meat should not be placed before our children. Its influence is to excite and strengthen the lower passion and has a tendency to deaden the moral powers. Grains and fruits prepared free from grease in as natural condition as possible should be the food for the tables of all who claim to be preparing for what? Translation to heaven. The less feverish the diet, the more easily can the passion be controlled. Gratification of taste should not be consulted irrespective of physical, intellectual, or moral health. I know that's to be true. As God may, guided me to make a transition over 50 years ago, at an early age, I was diagnosed with juvenile arthritis. I think I was 16 years of age. It lasted, I was about all the way into college. And as I was getting ready to be drafted into the NBA, I would definitely suffer tremendously for the pains from that arthritis. And I remember, I think before that time, that I had opportunity to go into professional sports, basketball, Leviticus 17.11 was open to me. I, I like to read the Bible, but I never understood it. But it says, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So I began to study that and recognize the blood represents Jesus and his sacrifice, but it has also physiological, biological reason. And I realized that in order for my body to be healthy, my blood must be pure. So what then produced good blood? The food and the drinks that we partake of. So I saw, I mean, one of my um, habits I had, I was a sugar holic. I love sugar. I like what you call Kool-Aid, little colored drinks but I call it sugar aid. When I finished making my Kool-Aid, sugar was this thick in the box job. I put sugar on my bread. I used to eat sugar sandwiches, sugar on my ice cream, sugar everywhere. I discovered that that was leaching calcium out of my body, B vitamins, affecting my nervous system, creating my joints. And I remember I used to eat pork. And I remember I used to work in the summer on a gut line detaching the gallbladder from the intestine and parasites coming everywhere. I stopped eating pork. I saw that God said, do not touch it, do not even touch it. I got rid of pork. When I read about, I was not even a, a professed Christian when I read about eating no blood, etc. And that's when I realized that the word of God was truly a medical book. And when I began to make these changes, that battle with rheumatoid arthritis when I used to be on steroid ended within one year. It reversed my condition. Then I was thrust deeply into the word of God with health. And that started my journey. And God said, see, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the, all the land. Every tree with seed in its fruit, you should have them for food. God has given man his diet. He has given us. Daniel's diet was in harmony with his belief. You hear that? I have esteemed the word of my mouth more than my necessary food. That's Job 23, 12. I esteem the word of God more than my necessary food. Daniel. Those three Hebrews in that fire furnace represent those three angels' message. That fourth, which is Jesus Christ, they're going to swell to a loud cry and going to fill this earth with the glory of God. Those men, they purpose in their heart to honor God. Daniel purpose in their heart not to defile. He said, prove me 10 days on, on pulse, grains, vegetables. Mind was clear. Intellect sharp. He was able to discern the things of God. So the Bible says as we conclude here, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 31. Whether we eat or drink, whatever we do, do it all for the glory of God. Ladies and gentlemen, as I close out, what we eat definitely is converted into chemicals in our body. But I want you to get this. What we eat is also converted into thoughts, feelings. The food we eat contains the nutrients if it's the proper food that feeds this mind, that we might prove what is acceptable and perfect with God, that we might attain to the 
mental disposition that will qualify us to receive the seal of the living God. Eating has a direct impact upon your and my salvation. Flesh food never was to be a part of man's diet. Christ ate flesh food in the outer court, but now he's mediating in the holies of holies. Will you come to the understanding, make an intelligent decision that your body does not belong to you. It belongs to God. He created, he redeemed it. He, re he purchased it by the blood of his own son. I realize that I want to be like Enoch, according to Hebrews 11, 5, and 6. I want to please God. I want to honor God. I want God to reign in my soul temple. I want him to be the king of glory. I want him to come into these temples, into my body, and turn over those tables of lustly, lustful flesh. I want to realize that God's way is in the sanctuary. Thy way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary. I've come to realize in these 43 years of ministering, 50 years of living according to God's plan, that health is a treasure. Health is a treasure. Health is a choice and not a chance. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forehead. I want to be able to seek Jesus' face without being consumed. You and I can be part of that group. We can have the same image. We can look into his face with, 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 with gratitude and appreciation. Is decision time. God will not put requirements before you and I, which are too so high that we cannot reach, without supplying the grace. So even though you're struggling, maybe struggling, even though the taste of the blood, the taste of flesh food, may be in your system, like it was mine. I wrestled with God. I prayed. I move everything out of my house that would cause me to be attracted. Sugar, coffee, teas, candy. I began to replace it with something better. You cannot get rid of something bad and don't replace it with something better. Plenty of water, fruits, vegetables, grains. I, I learned how to prepare my own food. Even when my wife at that time was not ready to make that leap, we ate our separate parts. I made my plant-based diet. She made hers. We did not allow any pork come in. But by beholding, she became changed. And so, you get on your knees and pray. To surrender means is to surrender your will. That means your choice. Your choice to eat a certain way that's contrary to the will of God. You want to choose God. What God has outlined to us a dietary plan. That dietary plan has a direct impact upon our mental and spiritual disposition. And now we are living in some serious time, friends. We're living in a time which God is ready to wind the clock up so this crisis can begin to come to a head where the Sunday law has been passed. When we come to the time where we cannot buy or sell. Time that we need to be out of those cities into the country growing our own food, living a simple life while we're still proclaiming the good news. God has a complete plan, order, detail. And I want to be part of that number. See, salvation is a bright product of God producing in us a character reflecting the very character of Jesus Christ. That cannot be done separate from the physical as well as the spiritual and the mental. I want all of God's plan. I want God's will to be done. I want him to prune, purge, and produce in me the very character of Jesus Christ. I want him to empty me of everything that defiled his temple. I pray that this is your desire. I pray that you have come to some understanding why Christ ate flesh food and what it means for us today. And what dietary platform we should be standing on this day. And if you want to, and those who want to know how to make a transition, learn how to make simple, tasteful, 
plant-based food, contact meat ministry. We have resources. We avail ourselves personally to come, conduct cooking classes, seminars, training, etc. Go to our website. As you get the information on our website at the end of this presentation, contact us for consultation, for more information, how to make the transition. And if you're already there, how you continue to grow. May God be your king, your ruler. May he reign in your lives supremely. May he be the one who orchestrates your step. May he be your guide, your savior. May you open the door of your heart as he stands there knocking and invite him to come in. I pray that this is your desire along with me. Will you not allow Christ to come in and do what he only can do in your life as well as my life? Invite him today. Say, Lord, I heard the word. I've been struggling with this diet for a period of time in flesh food. I realize, Lord, it has eternal, eternal implication. I want this body to be a temple for you to dwell in. I want you to become the ruler and the king of my life. If this is your desire, choose you this day, the God, the living God, whom you will serve. Let's pray. Oh, eternal, holy, righteous, heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you in this time of earth history. Your word has been spoken to us with clarity. And Lord, every excuse is taken away. So Lord, we cannot give you these hearts because they already belong to you. So we give you consent to take our hearts because we cannot give them to you. That you would keep these hearts pure for that name's sake because we cannot keep it for you, Father. And that you will save us, save us, our unchristlike, weak selves. And that you will shape, fashion, and mold these hearts Lord, until they become like the heart of Jesus entirely and completely and raise us up in the pure atmosphere of heaven that the rich current of your love may flow through us to every other soul that come under our influence. So, Father, we give you that permission to take these hearts and make them like you and set us in the path of righteousness that we will be light that dispel the darkness that surround this world. And souls will see that light and glorify those good works that you wrought in us because they will glorify you and become part of your everlasting kingdom. May this be our desire, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.